Okay, we have your 10 interesting integral from the MIT integration be 2025 semifinals round one problem one. We have the integral from zero to infinity cube root of x over one plus x squared dx. Okay, I think I've probably done this one every possible way in the past. And so what we can do is go right to a formula for this, looking at it in terms of the beta function. Okay, so now we have our formula on the board and we notice we're basically in the right form. It's, I mean, what we have for the formula is a little more complicated. If you look at it, you know, in our problem, we could look at it as having an exponent right there, a one. For the cube root of x, I can just rewrite that and put it as x to the one third. But what I really want for this to get an s value is I'm going to write, I'm, I'll write it as x to the four thirds minus one. I know when I've done this in the past, we've done different versions of it. Like when a is one, right, when that's not squared right there, then this basically goes away because then you have a one out front of the beta function. We also have this way right here to calculate the beta function, just putting it in terms of the gamma function and this, then hopefully if we have nice values here, we can just calculate this to an exact number. When I've derived this in the past, we did it a couple different ways. One way we could get to this is by starting with the more standard definition for the beta function and then doing u substitutions to get it into this form. The other way to prove this out or do it out the long way would be to do a u substitution for one over one plus x squared or like one over one plus x squared to the b or whatever, and that u substitution will get you to this. Doing it out is kind of tedious though. I feel like that was a pretty long u substitution, so that's why I'm not gonna do it over and over again. So anyway, what we can do is go ahead and just use our formula. We just need to identify the s, the a, and the b in this. We already said we just created that b, so our b value in this is gonna be one. Our s value, the way we have this set up, s is gonna be just four thirds. And then the a value, that's just gonna be the exponent on the x, this right here, so our a value is gonna be two. One thing you need to keep in mind with this formula is there's a lot of values where it won't converge. Like, I mean, of course you can't have a equal to zero right there, because then you're dividing by zero, and you'd be dividing by zero here too. Also, there's a lot of values, like you can't have, if you have negative integer values, well, the gamma function's not defined so there's a lot of different ways you get a negative integer here, here, and then you got a problem that way. But anyway, MIT set this one up so it's gonna work for us. So we'll just go ahead and plug in with our A, B, and S values. So what we're gonna have for one over A, that's gonna be one half, and then we're gonna have beta of B. So we're gonna have one minus S, which is four thirds over two. And then the other value is just gonna be the S over A. Let's reduce that. That's gonna be four six or two thirds. And so this right here, this is also gonna be two thirds. And so now we can just go and calculate it. We've got our one half in front, one minus two thirds, this is gonna be one third. So using now this formula, we'll put it in terms of the gamma function. So what we're gonna get is gamma of one third times gamma of two thirds over gamma of the sum of these things, one third plus two thirds, that's just gonna be gamma of one. Now for integers, we can just put this in terms of factorials. We have this formula relating gamma function to the factorial, or I guess you could look at it the other way. If we have gamma of n plus one, this is just gonna be the same thing as n factorial. So for gamma of one, using this, this is just gonna be the same thing as zero factorial or just one. So I'm gonna cross that off. We don't have to worry about that. And for this numerator, you could try to do the same thing, but then you're gonna get non-integer factorials. It's not quite clear how that's gonna work. What we can do instead on this is use Euler's reflection formula on it. That's gonna be just gamma of z times gamma of one minus z is gonna equal pi over sine pi of z. The reason I know this is gonna work is because notice both these inputs here add up to one as they do here. So let's use our Z, you could do this either way, right? You could use the Z value as two thirds or one third. Let's use one third just to be nice about it. So if I plug one third in there, we get gamma of one third times gamma of two thirds equals pi over sine pi over three. Sine pi over three, that's gonna be square root of three over two. So this is gonna be two pi over square root of three. Take this thing and plug it back in. What we have is one half times two pi over square root of three. So for my final solution on this, we just get pi over square root of three, and that's it. Okay, there you go. Good one from MIT 2025. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a good day.